Welcome to another Division 2 build video. This video will be covering how to build for maximum DPS with rifles in Warlords of New York. Like with my previous build videos, we won't be just talking about gear while in our inventory for the whole video. First, you need to understand how damage works in the Division 2 to effectively min-max your DPS build. After that, we'll look at the available gun models and talents in the chosen weapon class and the numbers behind them to pick the best one. Then, we'll go over the specialization to use, the best in slot gear choices and viable alternatives, what they are, and how to effectively farm for them. Finally, we'll use our understanding of how damage works to get some proper DPS numbers to be able to compare this build to others since the shooting range is flawed and not a good way to judge how good your build actually is. If you haven't watched one of my build videos before, then the next section is pretty important to learn, so keep watching. If you have watched one before, timestamps should be in the description below. Let's talk about how damage works in Division 2. It's important to understand how each damage stat works and what it means in order to maximize damage in this game. Base damage on your gun is where damage begins. Base damage is not this big number on your gun, but actually a smaller number that you have to toggle in the UI by going to a weapon, checking the options, and enabling show base damage at the bottom. All guns of a particular type at the same level have the same base damage. This isn't a random value anymore when a gun drops. For example, every classic M1A has the same base damage. This value is important because every damage stat you stack depends on this number when you land a hit. Weapon damage is the first thing to start stacking in order to increase your damage with guns. This is a core attribute that you can find in all six gear slots, on your weapon, in your specialization, and on some brands and gear sets. Looking at numbers, let's say that your gun's base damage is 10,000, and you stack a total of 100% weapon damage on your gear. Now your gun is hitting for at least 20,000 no matter where you hit, body or head. Next we have three other DPS stats to choose from on our gear as minor attributes. Crit chance, crit damage, and headshot damage. With gear 2.0, they really buffed the availability of crit and added so many enemies that don't take headshot damage, making crit the better way to go on average. Crit chance is hard capped at 60%, keep that in mind. You need both crit chance and crit damage stacked on gear to really see your DPS increase. Looking at our previous example, if we also have crit chance and 100% crit damage, we can now hit for 20,000 non-crit and 40,000 on-crit. If we also have 100% headshot damage, you can hit the head for 40,000 non-crit and 60,000 on a critical headshot. Critical damage and headshot damage values are additive to each other when they occur. Talents on gear now talk about damage increases in two ways. They'll either say they increase total weapon damage or that they'll amplify weapon damage. For example, if you proc one talent that increases total weapon damage by 25%, and another that increases total weapon damage by 10%, this category will add up to 35%. So looking back at our previous example, with an additional 35% multiplier, we will now hit for 27,000 non-crit body shots, 54,000 on-crit body shots, and 81,000 on-crit headshots. Anything that amplifies damage creates its own multiplier that you throw onto the end of the formula. This is much stronger than total weapon damage depending on which talents you've chosen and how many effects are stacked on your character. If our previous example had 10% amplification instead of another 10% total weapon damage increase, our two talents would be responsible for 37.5% more damage instead of just 35%. This puts us at 27,500 non-crit body shots, 55,000 crit body shots, and 82,500 on crit headshots. It doesn't seem like much, but it really adds up as more effects are stacked. Now that we've covered how amplification works, let's talk about a few gun specific stats. Damage to health, damage to armor, and damage to targets out of cover. These damage types are basically like damage amplification talents because they are individual multipliers. Damage to health works against any enemy without an armor bar or with a depleted armor bar. This even includes meaty enemies like tanks, mini tanks, and dogs. Damage to armor only works against enemies with armor bars, not enemies with physical armor plates you can shoot off like tanks or dogs. Damage to targets out of cover should be self-explanatory. Shields do not count as cover. Let's say we have 10% damage to armor, 10% damage to health, and 10% damage to targets out of cover. We now get up to another two potential multipliers activated in our damage formula at any point during combat. Our example is now at the point where we are doing almost 10x the damage our gun started with. You can see how damage starts going up with more sources added into the mix. And now that we know how damage is calculated, how can we figure out how much DPS we have? There are two ways to look at DPS, burst and sustained. Both are important in understanding how good your weapon is at damaging stuff in this game. 
Burst DPS is how much damage we can deliver per second without worrying about reloading. This is generally what matters more for your typical day-to-day -day situations, where you need to kill something before it kills you. It also helps cause NPCs to stagger faster, keeping them from being able to fire back. Sustained DPS is how much damage we can deliver per second while also factoring in reloads. This is more specific to the PvE side of the game, especially when fighting a spongy boss where even a full DPS spec build will need to dump mag after mag and nothing is interrupting you. Weapons in every class are balanced around the idea of sustained DPS, so that they're within a reasonable range of each other, so the gap between the worst and the best gun isn't too big. With that in mind, there's always at least one weapon per class considered the meta in PvP or PvE that is better than the rest. Knowing how this stuff works will help you pick the best weapon for the right situation. Looking at rifles, nothing has really changed since the last weapon balancing happened in Title Update 6. There are three rifles that stood out back then that are still worth mentioning now. The classic M1A, the modern M1As, and the Mark 17. Here are some quick numbers about them. This table was built from what we see in game. I don't have all the rifles shown because I'm waiting on data miners to pull all the relevant numbers at level 40 from the game files. We can revisit this table when the devs do another balance pass. The modern M1As have the best burst, the Mark 17 has the best sustain, but the classic M1A is the most practical in its class because it hits incredibly hard per shot, has a decent mag size, and a realistic rate of fire so you can be accurate with your shots. It's also less likely to hurt your hand from pulling the trigger for hours on end. Classic M1A is the best rifle right now. As for rifle talents, there are three we'll be looking at. Rifleman, Boomerang, and Lucky Shot. Rifleman has the most potential as it stacks on headshot hit up to 5 times, giving you an additive 50% weapon damage if you're a capable player. Rifleman is my number one recommendation. Boomerang is the next best choice as long as you're capped on crit. With 60% crit, on average, 30% of your shots will proc this talent, giving you an additive 40% weapon damage on your next shot. These procs also effectively extend your mag size, and these free bullets can also proc the talent. You stand to gain maybe around 6 extra bullets per mag if you land every shot and have max crit. Lucky Shot is my final recommendation if you want to fire from cover without worrying about accuracy. This talent doesn't do anything to increase damage, it's just a talent you can pick up if you want to be lazy with a precision weapon. This talent also does not work with the shield scope combo. You can find a perfect version of this talent on a named classic M1A called Baker's Dozen. The best in slot bonus stat to have on your rifle is 10% damage to targets out of cover. It provides the most damage of all the other stats in this slot. The best attachments to run are the tightly packed marksman mag for 5 mag size, the sharpshooter scope for 45 more headshot damage, and the laser for 5% more crit chance. If you're worried about looking through the scope, don't be. If we're using the crusader shield with our scoped M1A, it still gives us the damage but we get to stay shooting in third person. More on this technique later. To get yourself a good classic M1A, you need to go to your map and grind the targeted loot area for rifles. The M1A CQV and Police Mark 17 have blueprints, the classic M1A does not. Blueprints can be obtained from level 3 control points if you'd like to try one of these rifles instead. The best specialization to run with this build is quite obvious, Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter gives rifles an additional 15% headshot damage, 15% stability, and you'll be generating plenty of special weapon ammo from all the headshot kills you should be getting while playing with a precise weapon. Sharpshooter also has the best sniper scope attachment in the game, which we'll be using in this build. Moving on to the gear, the first thing you have to have is an overlord piece in a rifle build. Lucky for us, one of the best DPS items in the game is the Fox's Prayer Overlord Knee Pads. These are named knee pads that come with 15% damage to targets out of cover. The best way to farm this is from targeted overlord in the light zone. 1% drop rate, light zone exclusive. FYI, the light zone is everything that is not the dark zone. Next up, we'll be worrying about stacking crit to maximize damage. Naturally, you'd think this means we'd get 3 Providence, 1 Seska, and 1 Grupo for those brand crit bonuses. However, there are a few other named items that are worth picking up regardless of the brand bonuses we end up losing. You'll want to use the named Petrov gloves called Contractor's Gloves because they have 11% damage to armor. Best way to farm this is from target to Petrov in the light zone. Again, 1% drop rate, light zone exclusive. Then in our mass slot we have two strong options. The Exotic Coyote's Mask, which is awarded to you for hitting rank 35 in Season 1. The devs haven't made this exotic farmable in-game yet. When they do, it's supposed to drop from the Hyena final boss of Jefferson Trade Center. The best in-slot option for PvE is to use the named Yal Holloman Mask because it has 21% damage to health. 
You have to farm this from targeted mass in the dark zone. 1% drop rate, dark zone exclusive. Moving on to backpacks, we'll want to use a Providence backpack with Vigilance. Vigilance is basically an always on 25% total weapon damage increase as long as our armor doesn't get hit, which makes perfect sense with a rifle and a shield. Farm for a regular Providence backpack with Vigilance by hitting the Providence brand targeted loot in the light zone. For a slightly better backpack, you can go farm for The Gift, a named Providence backpack with perfect vigilance in the dark zone. It only shaves off a second from the vigilance cooldown, but if you want to max this build out, you might as well get one eventually. Wait for targeted Providence in the dark zone if you want The Gift. It is dark zone exclusive, 1% drop rate. The holster choice is pretty straightforward. You can either craft or find a Seska holster with all red stats. It's just a stat boost, nothing unique about this item compared to the rest of the build. Now the chest, where we get to play with a couple options depending on whether you're solo or in a group of support builds. We can either play with perfect glass cannon or perfect focus. So which one is better? Up to 30% more amplified damage or up to 60% total weapon damage? Well, as it turns out, perfect focus is actually better as long as you're not getting a bunch of total weapon damage buffs from your team. Perfect glass cannon starts to push out more damage once your teammates give you an additional 18% total weapon damage. Perfect Focus is also safer since you're not taking 60% increased damage from Perfect Glass Cannon. Perfect Focus can be found on the named Araldi chest called Pristine Example. Best to farm it from targeted Araldi in the Light Zone. 1% drop rate, Light Zone exclusive. Focus requires that you look through a scope. That's where the Sharpshooter's scope and the shield come in. By holding ADS, you can see the Focus talent build up on your bar. You gain the benefit of the scope and the benefit of the talent without looking through the scope. You can also tap ADS while moving to juggle the talent's uptime while moving forward. The last thing to look for, and a nice to have, is the Orbit Sidearm. I carry this on all DPS builds from when I'm looking to get a quick DPS steroid with Perfect Finisher. Swap to Orbit, kill something, swap back to my main gun, and it gives me 35% crit chance and 40 crit damage for 15 seconds with Perfect Finisher. Best place to farm this is the Dark Zone when it has pistol targeted loot. It is Dark Zone exclusive and has a 1% drop rate. My current stats right now are 134.5% weapon damage, 50.8% crit chance, 81.7% crit damage, 145.6% headshot damage, up to 85% total weapon damage from Vigilance and Perfect Focus, 16% damage to armor, 21% damage to health, and 15% damage to targets out of cover. Using what we know about damage, these numbers are what our build can push when the right talents and conditions are met. I still have some things to optimize like getting a better rifle with 10% damage to targets out of cover, but the numbers are still pretty good. To summarize, this build is incredibly competitive to my LMG DPS build, and in a lot of cases safer and more reliable because we're not running perfect glass cannon. We also get to fight with precision for more range and a disposable shield that helps us keep us alive longer. I highly recommend this build if you're looking to smash heroic and legendary content. With that said, another division math class is over. I hope you all learned something from this video. If you found this video useful, feel free to subscribe to Future Division 2 content. Also, swing by my Twitch stream whenever I'm live, link in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.